All right, so yeah. now I'm going to talk about Sound of Metal, right? This was a film that caught my eye when I saw the trailer for this for, um, um, a few months ago, sorry. And, well, the person who, you know, was, you know, once I saw this guy, I was like, okay, I need to see this, was Riz Ahmed, right? Which was a guy that yeah. we have pretty much yeah, been, yeah, yeah. enjoyed his work ever since um, The Night Off, yes. you know, be that miniseries right. from HBO. Right. Uh, yeah. Venom, Venom, we can let slide, I mean, you know. <laughs> We, we can let that yeah, we can let that sit, right? I mean, everybody yeah, that everybody has, you know, like you know, hits, you know, it, you know, it's it's a, it's, a, it's it's not a, it's not it's not a win. It's, it's an L, but you know, whatever, right? But yeah, um, and yeah, also, he got check, he got check. Yeah, he 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 got himself a check, right? Can't complain about that. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah. it's the premise of this that really drew me in, right? So what it's about, right? It centers on the character of Ruben, right, played by Riz, and he is a drummer. He is one half of a metal duo called black gammon right so his um girlfriend is lead singer right well sorry she's the only singer there right she sings and she plays um guitar right yeah. and i love how like in the opening it just kind of sets up the world that he's in when he goes to a show right so she's doing her vocals of course it's metal so you know she's just screaming into the mic and he's just like drumming his heart out right but eventually true um eventually like well i should say within the first act um his hearing starts to go, uh, um, he starts to lose his hearing, right? Okay. It's even wow. to the point that in a performance, he like legit can't, can't hear anything, right? So, of course, he goes to a physician to find out what's going on. He's um, telling them that, you know, they well, you can have a, a treatment, you can get a hearing aid, but it costs X amount of dollars, right? So, kind of not well thought or planned. But I mean, understand that the guy that this is where he gets his bread and butter, right? Just doing these gigs, right? He lives in an RV with his girlfriend. As like you know, we they they actually booked for a tour. So it's like yo, this is this is this is what we had to do, right? So in his case, is like he could hopefully stick stick it out, and right. once they have enough cash, then he could go and do this thing. But one night in a show, is like no, I can't even hear the drums. I can't even hear her sing. I can't even hear the audience. So. It's oh. like, all right, I have to do something about this, right? So, um, through some circumstances, he winds up at this uh, that's school, but more like a camp, if you will, for deaf people, right? Um, right. It's also, well, it also has um, sort of a EE kind of group, basically. Well, more because right. some of the some of the adults have have dealt with like alcohol or drug abuse, right? The guy who runs the place, he was a former alcoholic as well, and well, Ruben, he has been sober off heroin for like four years. Um, well, just right at the moment where he met his girlfriend, who I've got um, her name is Lou. She's played by Olivia Cook, right? Who you remember from you know stuff like uh, Ready Player One, right? But yeah, so okay. yeah, it was it was it right? Yeah, so, yeah, while he's there, um, and yeah, he is completely deaf at this moment, right? He has wow. to learn sign language, right? And, you know, eventually he, he develops this bond with, you know, it's not just adults, but also kids are there as well, too. So, you know, he, he starts to understand what's going on with him. By the same time, um, his girlfriend had to leave because, she, well, apparently she had to go back to see her dad. She just can't deal with what's going on right now. So she just had to spend some time with her dad who lives in France, by the way, right? And yeah, essentially what this is is just a, a character study. It's just really about this guy just really trying to understand his ailment and just how to deal with it, and that's it. Um, and I make it sound simple, but it goes way deeper than that, though. And I'll just say right off the off the bat, this was a damn near flawless movie, in my opinion. I nice. loved loved this movie. Um, this 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 one thing I just want to zero in quickly on uh, the sound design. Yeah, if there's well, one. Yeah, exactly. I'll be, I'll be for sure, give right, the, right, right. Yeah, for sure. Give like, the subject you, matter. Yeah, give it the subject matter. You kind of need to have impeccable sound design. This one has it. It puts you d- deep in this guy's head space trip. Any moment, you know, mean that he his his hearing goes off. You know, what I mean how yeah. everything sounds distorted, right? Um, even hearing like a little, um, ringing in his ears and all that kind of stuff, you hear all that kind of you you hear all that. And lucky for me, I was able to watch this with headphones on. Like, let's say right. that this is the only way that you could watch this show, but with headphones on though, with the studio headphones on, I was like, yeah, I'm picking yeah. up on on all these sounds and it works too. And what I love is that um, like you would think, oh, drummer, band, music. Car here, ting ting ting, stress. It's like it's sort of like whiplash in a sense, but no, it's yeah, not really that. Yeah. Right? 
it, it may feel a little whiplashy at first, like how it just kind of throws it into this music. But no, it's just a setup for what this guy is going through. What I love though is like when he goes into like even early on when he's heading across to that to the to the um to the camp, right? You hear like these nature sounds, right? And it just yeah. Just the comparison between that and just like the, the 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 harshness of like you know the music and the city stuff and all that, yeah, it, it just works too. Um, yeah, so even in those quiet moments, you just get some rich sound design dread. So yeah, this this has to get an Oscar nom for this dread now uh, for sound design for sound editing and mixing. I should say, yeah, and I would be so happy if it wins either one or even both, even right? I would be so happy. Speaking of Oscars, um, Riz Ahmed. To see it right off the bat, he could get an Oscar now for this trip for Best Actor. I thought nice. that his performance nice. wow. was excellent in this trip. And yes, he is doing the whole I'm in America, so after true this American accent. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, yeah, works, yeah. it works, you know. So he has this sort of slight sort of stoner hippie vibe going on. But it works, it works, it works, right? Um, but you really do feel his struggle and I like that, you know, it's not Peter that was just this victim, you know what I mean? Like, oh, woe is me, I can't hear. But it's a guy in a situation where, you know, we, like he's required to hear what he's doing, right? That though yeah. he can't do it. And I mean, it may sound like really simple, but I mean, it's serious. I mean, nobody wants to lose their hair at all. Yeah, it, it because how, how, how the show perfectly puts us in that headspace of his, yeah, you, you, you feel scared, you know what I mean? Like, you yeah, feel, yeah. you feel, um, you feel worried for the guy, Jed, and I really yeah, dug what they did that, I can right? Imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you feel how burny he is by all this and how angry he is by all this too, right? And you think, oh, it's just easy for him to just escape through drugs and all that, but he's done with that. So I love that he is willing to to make moves. He's gonna take that step. He's gonna do what he has to do to 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 get over what what he's you know, what he's dealing with. And yes, right. he does what you would expect him to do, but and you think, oh, well, you know, the show could just end right there. But there's a, I don't want to spoil the end, but there's a really, really powerful moment. And I thought this was just such a simple, but just perfect way to end it. Where, yeah, you know, we, even things are back to quote unquote normal is what he learned at that camp. And what I would just say, in terms of, with, without spoiling anything, he kind of understands stillness. He understands what right. it means. Just kind of shut off the noise for a bit and just really think and just reflect on life and where he is going and i thought that was just such a powerful team and how they just ended like that i was just like yeah this this works right yeah. um olivia cook i thought that she was great as lou she's reasonable but at the same time um like she's all she is there for for her manner but at the same time yeah she, you know she she can't deal with everything so i don't blame her for 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 stepping away for a while right you know while he deals with his drama right but yeah um i thought that performance why she was great right there's not anybody else big there like i was i couldn't really notice the guy who plays um the owner of the play uh, of the camp right his name is joe I couldn't pinpoint your face or you tell that so Technically, Riz and Olivia are the two big, you know, leads that you'll see in this, right? Where everybody else is just, you know, side characters. Uh. Um, and also, I really dug how they, they, they touch on the deaf community, as they call it in this show, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And really what I love, though, is that they don't paint these these individuals as, oh, you can't hear. I'm so sorry for you. You know what I mean? You know, like treating them less than, than they actually would the, the normal people, you know, as, as we yeah. should do, as we should be reminded of. Right. And, you know, just the moments with him, just, you know, um, connecting with them, you know what I mean? It's, it's nice. You know what I mean? It's just really, really, just beautiful, actually, to see, right? Um, there's not a lot of music used in this, though, but when it's there, it works it too, so just set the tone of the film. But really, as far as just audio stuff goes, it's just really the sound design that works, too. Especially, like, yeah. when it comes to just putting it in... Um, Riz, Riz's character's mind, you know what I mean? Like it just works, and yeah, just strongly recommend just hearing this thing with headphones. Um, I should like listen to it with just like a, like a stereo on just to pick up on it, but yeah, you know what I mean? Like yeah, I really do want to see this again just to hear those little moments. You know what I mean? So I would say that if you like like in my case, like I I want to learn sound design, um, in film, right? I would that, that's right. what I was passionate about, right? Yeah, I would say this is this like this similar to um. To Whiplash right. is really a show to, to like 
Well, I was to say Whiplash is more edited than anything else. But exactly. like, if you want to learn sound design, dreads, you know how to how to really properly mix and edit, you know, um, sound for film. Yeah, I strongly recommend checking this out. And just as a character piece, this works. Um, don't go in expecting this thing to be some sort of oh, well, it's a rock star who you know who uh, who's self destructive and all that kind of stuff. It may give you that impression for the beginning, but that's not what they're going for. It's a simple very human story that anyone can relate to Jen and you know what I mean even though Riz Riz's character is who he is you can relate to this guy you could feel for this guy you feel sorry for him at moments and you just you know like, like you want him to get out of this right? you, when he does you do feel happy for him right but just don't want to spoil anything beyond that so yeah I really really dug this film um, I was hearing a lot of great things about this one. and I am um, yeah I, I, I am another I would I, I would say that I am someone else who could definitely say, yeah, this is one of the year's best films. And uh, yes, I know the movie came out last year on the film festival route, but it was finally released on um, Amazon Prime. So finally got the chance to check it out. And yeah, this is going to be up there as one of my favorite shows of 2020, hands down. So nice. rating wise, lighter, decent four and a half out of five, man. I'm going high with this one, man. Yeah, um, okay. Riz. I want to see him get nominated for this. Um, whoever's behind the sound design, well, for this, they need to get like noms for this as well too, because yeah, they really outdid themselves here. So yeah, Ricardo can't recommend this uh, more enough, man. This is gonna be up there in my top ten for sure. Definitely check nice, out Sound Metal. Okay. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll, I'll give it a chance. Yeah, right, right, right. I would love to hear your your thoughts on that show when you when you do see it. And speaking of best of, question mark, question mark, question mark. Let's talk about Mank, boy. Mank. Mank, yeah. Mank. <laughs> so, what's up, uh, Mank? Well, yeah, what's up, Mank? Yeah, so Ricardo, I want you to do the, the synopsis for this, right? But um, just, right. To, just to do a little intro, right? So, first sell for this was David Fincher. Just see that this was right. his latest project, right? Last thing he did literally was Gone Gill. That was like what 2014, right? Now we're in 2020, yeah. right? Of course, you know he did um, work for um, directing work and you know executive producing stuff for things like Mindhunter. Um, also, oh gosh, House of Cards, which like right. I said, number seven review, I was I was really liking, and then you know, you know, yeah. Mister Man do eating, right? Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, so that was his cell. Well, first, well, right, well, first thing that sold me was David Fincher. Secondly, was the trailer that he dropped for this. So this really retro, thirty slash forties looking right. black and white trailer. The sound sounded exactly like how a trailer would would sound like back then. Yeah, Visual yeah. Same thing. It just looked very old school, very yeah, archaic. It's one, one of these films, Hollywood. Cool. Yeah, Hollywood, Hollywood loving itself type movies. But it, what they decide to do is. It does something that catch me off guard with it. Um, and it didn't hit me until, you know, seeing reviews or whatever it is, what was really going on. Because I don't know the details of this. Like, I, I'm largely ignorant of the details of these stories. So to hear, you had to be a real film buff to appreciate this one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we can't sell ourselves out, but yeah, that that is yeah. true, right? Um, and yeah, well, also the, the, the last sell for this for me was the connection to Citizen Kane, right? Um, which right. is still widely regarded as the best film ever made. Like, I remember, like, um, maybe you had the same experience, too, like, when we first went to the UE, right? And, you know, uh, well, that's where I saw Citizen Kane for the first time, and you know, okay. over the years, I, I grew to really appreciate and love it. It's one of my all-time favorite shows, but I remember at a point in time, I think it was either, like, Roger Ebert or someone saying that this was, like, the best movie ever made, or something like that. Okay. Over the years, like, no, not really, but I mean, it's right. a great movie, don't get me wrong. I mean, it changed right. the game, man. Of course, one of the best debut films ever made because, I mean, this was Orson Welles' debut feature, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. But still, I mean, it's a movie that you'll, like, you know, film buffs will always go back to and be like, yeah, yeah I mean, this show is great for X amount of reasons and all that kind of stuff, right? But yeah, um, so I was curious to see what, you know, um, well, how David Fincher was going to touch that. But in this case here, he focuses, he focuses, sorry, on the guy who wrote the, the script for that. That would be right. Cuban G. Mankowitz, right? Who is yeah. played by Gary Oldman. So, yeah, take it away. What is Mank about? Yeah, Mank um, is, yeah. <laughs> right, it's effectively uh, the, the behind-the-scenes narrative of, well, Citizen Kane, how it was made, what it was influenced by, and, you know, just the kind of the trials and tribulations of 
um, well, Mankowitz, but here's the thing. It does this really weird turn that is false. It's, it's complete bullshit, let's be clear about that, about the relationship between um, why it is that Citizen Kane was made in the first place involving something political and something very current. And that is where it catch you completely off guard. So it, this part, the, the first part of it is no secret, where um, Austin Wells' character, is, um, uh, Charles Foster Kane, is based off of William Randolph Hughes. We know that. Everybody yeah, knows Yeah, we, we know. Right? Yeah, yeah. What no one really knows is, well, the relationship that Austin Wells had with, with Mankiewicz. And then, this is the, well, this is the part that is more or less seems to be completely false, is why Mal- Mankiewicz fell out of favor with William, William Randolph Hughes. And that is where stuff got weird. I uh, what? What? What's going on here? And I then I thought that was an interesting turn, but I didn't feel it personally. Um, right, right, right. But the thing is, this this movie was still pretty good for me um, for what it was. Uh, mostly because I just appreciated the fanish, fan basey type aspect of the whole thing. Um, you know, it's it's really a, you know it's it's blatantly a love letter. It caters to the aesthetic, all the shots and all the rare, all the production stuff. I appreciate all of that. Right. And then it gets into the, the actual backstory and why Mank is the way he is. Um, that's when it, it, I like it, but I can't say I love this because it, it I, because I, this do, I, this aesthetic does not appeal to me. I don't really care about recreating this old thing. Like it had other movies that do a better job at that. Or I would have liked to see just a modern interpretation of that instead of just doing it in that style like um this movie shit um remember the cohen's made a hollywood movie the other day what's the name of that movie bro? oh um what was heel caesar was it heel caesar right yeah which, which you saw i i haven't seen that as yet. okay no problem right but heel caesar was about like old hollywood stuff and, and i preferred stuff like that like just these stories that don't have to be real it's not about whether or not it's real it's just how it's told i preferred I like Tail Caesar a lot more than this say, for example. Weird comparison. It's not, not the, the best comparison, but you, you know, you get what I'm saying. And it's just these old Hollywood stories, you know. And if you, like, I don't really, I really couldn't care about the drama between Mankiewicz and William Randolph Hearst because it's, it's, well, I don't want to spoil why it is that he, they lose favor with each other because it's like the Korean favor with this really wealthy rich, rich guy. And then they decide to burn you for this this reason, and yeah, you decide to challenge this powerful person. I have this all all these reasons as to why you challenge powerful people. But that drama wasn't that interesting to me personally. But then all the all the aesthetic and thing choices I like a lot, even though I that stuff don't really impress me anymore. It's one of these movies personally that if it came out ten years ago, I would really love it. I'd be like, oh, it's so brilliant, and you know, kind of like how I felt about Good Night and Good Luck or something like that. But then now it's like, right. oh well, it, yeah, okay. I, I I I get it. Um, it's it's well made and I'm pulling pulling from Fitcher for that. He's it's expertly directed. All of this stuff, you know, it gets the check. You know, it, it ticks the boxes. But I wasn't personally really feeling the actual narrative. Something like say, or oh, the movie I was trying to remember is something like Trombo. That I appreciate a little more personally. But even that, I know a lot of people don't really care for that for what it was trying to do. Um, okay, I, I I still haven't seen that show as well. Right, that is another history of Hollywood type movie, if you, you know, and, but that had a different reason and paradigm for why it was the way it was. It's good. Mank is pretty good. It, it, Gary Oldman does his Gary Oldman-ness, you know, not since, um, not since the way he played, um, the oh, Prime Minister um, England. Um, Dr. Sawa, where he played with the right. right? Yeah. Right, it's, 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 it's on that. It's, it's just, it's him doing his, his best. Um, everybody else was good. Adam Anderson Creed was pretty good. Um, the guy who played, Wells was terrible. Hated him. <laughs> I, don't, oh, I don't know why he felt so. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about. I'll talk about I that thought, guy. Uh, yeah, he, like him, and I didn't really. Yeah, I didn't get why they decided to go that direction with him. But the guy we got for for William Randolph was yeah, a big big top top actor, right? Um, your boy from Green Hornet, right? Um, yeah, 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 Charles Dance, the the great Charles, Charles Dance. Dance. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, all right, good, they, 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 interesting choice. It works. Um, it's. It's good, but I feel it's a kind of film that I grow out of. But I appreciate the history of the act, what they're talking about, and then the actual like history of this film itself because it was written by David Fincher's dad. So it's one of these movies that should have gotten made a long time ago. It's one of those. Yeah. yeah. Like, all right, 
I, I give it a, I give it its pass on wherever it is. Um, I well, you could you could give me a play and then I'll give a rating. You, I, think, I think that's a raw spoiler if you want to just have a full discussion about this. But and I, I'll uh, uh, no no I'll, I, I'm, I'm not going to spoil it yet. It's, right, but I'll I, I, I'll I give I'll, I'll but I just have a feeling about it. But yeah, we, you can talk about it. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So reason why I don't want to spoil it because honestly, this is what that I want to rewatch though. Um, but right. not in a hurry though. So here's the thing with this, right? right. Like for me, um, I I do really acknowledge the fact that yes, well, the um, Jack Fincher that would be um, David's dad passed away, right? And yeah. I believe it was the nineties, yeah. right? And David, he was working on the script from since like the nineties. I think even before David really broke out with um, with uh, Seven, right? Back in ninety five. Right. So, you know, I'm glad that, you know, at least in this period of David's career where he's not really doing much, he could just kind of give his his dad's um his 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 dad's script, you know, some time in the, in the, in his in his son, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I mean I appreciate that, right? And you could tell it comes from you could tell it's a labor of love. You could tell it comes from a deep rooted passion for, you know, go, the golden age of, of Hollywood, you know, of yeah. cinema and all these kind of things. Of course, because we, you know, film buffs put Susan Key in such a high regard, um, it's not surprising that he draws heavily from that film, right? Um, not so much thematically as I expected, but more visually, boy, because, oh my god, this is a... Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, it looks gorgeous, actually. Like, shockingly yeah. gorgeous. Though. I mean, I know David Fincher's films always look greater, but this one, I feel like he just outdid himself, boy, because there's so much, like, careful attention to making every scene Look and feel like here, you know, like like this is something from the 30s or the 40s. Yes, you could kind of squint and be like, oh yeah, this is digital, blah 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 blah, whatever, whatever, right, whatever. Right, but right, right, right. still, just the 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 detail to everything though know, works. Um, what what really surprised me though, well, the score right, which is done by my boys, um, Trent Reznor, Atticus Red, um, oh, yeah. Atticus Ross, sorry. Um, you yeah. know they they worked on numerous films before. Yeah, the yeah, there's, there's the always work stuff. Yeah, yeah, they did the score for um for the Watchmen limited series, by the way. But right, here, what right. they do, right? Like they do this sort of they do they do a they do a fair, they do a decent jazzy score, right? Um, of course, we expect with them it is dark at certain points, right? But <laughs> what dog like just not just the music, but the audio itself, like the vocals, everything. It have this retro, mono sound to everything, chat. Like it sounds legit, like. You know, like it was recorded originally in Bono, and it was just like re re um, converted digitally by um, you know for the sake of the shooter. Yeah. But you could hear it; you could hear that hollowness, that slight hollowness in everything. You know, <laughs> with with when characters well, yeah, talk and like, what. I I it's not like, not, wow, not take, yeah. that that detail. Yeah. <laughs> I not taken anywhere from a tech on a technical standpoint. It's absolutely brilliant. I not taken anything away from the film on that standpoint. Um, but you know, it's the usage of it that we're going to talk about now. Right, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I, I agree, I agree. And you know, like, I'm watching all this stuff and I'm like, yes, I should love this. I should absolutely love this. And I was getting into the character of, of Herman, right? Played by, by Gary, right? Yeah. Getting into the world of, you know, you know the 30s Hollywood. It, you know, it's a great moment involving uh, Louis B. Mayer, played by Alice Howard. I thought that he was great at this. <laughs> one moment where you're talking about um, NGM and what it means. And right. just those moments right. was working for me. But where the show falls for me, and I, I, I guess it will, it, it, because I've seen this for the first time, maybe if I watch it more, I'll get is the story being told and it's right. how the story is told and what the story is right so how the story is told they do these flashbacks right? and right. i don't want to say it's an over reliance of it but it's almost to the point that you just it's like what well, i thought it was just about him writing the script though but i get that they try yeah. to connect it to things in the past and like hollywood history well, and that, how that, that all okay, led so to where that, he came from that, but i just felt there was a little too much of it it almost kind of distract so from in oh, reference this is to, what's really going on right no that that in itself is also in reference to citizen k like in itself like I, that is I why know, i don't really, I, yeah I but there was still right. okay yeah. but there was right. still somewhat of a linear narrative going on there but because right. they up for this non-linear thing it just kind of made it just kind of made things a little unfocused at times, right? No, it part, it part, it it is the problem is that because, as I said, the technical stuff is good, but is you, you carry the gimmick a little too far. Now. That is the problem. That is a simple problem. Right, right, right. Yeah, uh, yeah I so that is why I wasn't 
that is why the, the film didn't really do it for me in that sense. I was like, well, I get where you're going for, you know, I, I understand this, but your career gimmick a little too far. <laughs> That's my problem. Right, didn't right. That, that's stuff, yeah. Didn't and then, and then, yeah, and then yeah. also to the, the, the story itself, right? Like, while I was getting into it, I was like, okay, t- now we're going to see the drama that went down into writing the script and what the script really meant for, not just for Orson, but for Herman, you know what I mean? Why to get right. credit at him kind of came back at you know you know William and all these all these little bits and things there. but I, I had to see this I had to see this it didn't really grip me as much as I wanted I think the reason being is because it just caters more for no offense for true diehard film buffs like oh you like yeah. you're, like I right, like I call myself a film buff right but when it comes yeah. to like history behind the scenes when it comes to like oh you know all this studio stuff like i am like marginally familiar with things like that right but i i more look at oh this is how the industry developed over the years that oh this is what this guy who was the ceo of this company or whatever it is and this is what he did and this i i don't really study all these things right but for those who do who really know the hollywood history they will know every single reference they will know who uh, Bill Nye is played well. By the way, yes, Bill Nye was in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, wait, yeah, that's yeah. Bill Nye. That's Shit. shit. That took me a while to pick up. I was like, wait, that's fucking Bill Nye. What are you asking? Yeah, like I had to rewind the shoes. Like, wait, wait. And how, yeah. how, 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 I, how could, how, how come I didn't pick up on that earlier, right? Yeah, and then when they bring in the political stuff, I was like, okay. I, I, I get it, so, but again, here's the problem. It's, it's right. still kind of late, but I still feel like the show is losing focus. This is about the script. It's about the politics right. that was going on behind the scenes that led to the right. creation of the script. But is it about the script? Is it about Hollywood? Or is it about Mag? Like the show just kind well, of yeah. tries to do everything, but not. I would have, okay. So this is this. This is so this is the, this is where the, the film really loses. So they decide to decide to do this thing that have. No actual evidence behind it. It's one of these, you know, okay, narrative, okay. counter narrative stuff. That, that whole thing doesn't seem to have any evidence behind it. Like, if that was the case, oh. because Mang himself was, like, was it the conservative? That was right. trying to okay. say. Well, like, I, I was, if I was that was kind of real. Everything, I was just kind of watching everything, like, okay, well, this, no. this happened, right? So, all right. No, 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 Exactly. And that's, that's my main thing with it. Again, I don't hate if you decide to tell a story. I, I don't. I don't have to fight down with you to have many stories that could pull off non true non-linear stuff and, and be fine. To have plenty of stories that embellish, still hard. This, it's a, it applies, it plays the embellishment as if it's real. You know, you know what you kind of remind me of? Um, you know, oh gosh. Um, remember Roland Emmerich made a made a, a conspiracy theory movie about William Shakespeare? Remember that? Anonymous or something right, like that? Right, right, Anonymous, yeah, yeah. That's what this felt like. It's like, what the hell is this? Why would you like tell the story like that now? This kind of weird conspiracy theory laden narrative that have no basis in fact. And what? Why do this though? Like that 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 that's kind of stuff to just lose me. I don't get what was the point of that. You know, right. if look, if no, people no, gonna no die on the hill know, and not no, no, no that I know that, sorry, no that I know right. well, now I had to do my research and see where the show was embellished or what, you know. I don't mind, and I don't mind embellishment. Top, uh, top plenty of movies are doing embellishment and, and get get away with it. I think Amadeus was like that, right? That, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. Yeah, but yeah. It was good. Uh, yeah, Amadeus is great actually. So you know, yeah. I, I don't know. This stuff. Yeah. That stuff is kind of losing. That stuff is right. kind of losing. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So just just rounds it up, right? Um, and yes, I dug the performances. I thought that you know Gary Oldman was great here. Not like oh, this is going to yeah. be one of his best performances ever, right? To be that right, as human, right, right, exactly. But yeah. Gary was doing his thing, right? I mean, he could do yeah. no wrong in my eyes. Um, I thought that about the Seafried was great. I mean, she had the looks she down there as far as because, being, um, because who, who she based on, who she's supposed to be based on, and you know, in that whole paradigm of you know, if you know, if you know Citizen Kane. Who she's supposed to be, you know, what that analog is. Oh, it's like, oh, that real clever and funny in its own right, though. It's like, okay. Um, yeah. I love yeah. how she just plays into that whole, I don't want to say ditzy, but that sort of sucky, dirty, sorry, you know, uh, transatlantic speaking, you know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, pop yeah, show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like she fits that right. perfectly, in my opinion. And I like the, yeah, that, the fact that she was kind of, here. yeah, I, I, I like that she wasn't just that. It was just like, well, I kind of just do this because, yeah, I, I just want to make a career, just make, be in film, but I don't know where my future is going. So, stuff like that yeah. I really appreciate, right? A little, a little depth, right? 
Um, a dog, Lily Collins, who was the secretary for Herman. Um, there's this little subplot going on with her husband being missing in war and all that kind of stuff. That was interesting. Right. And then this, they uh, also see Gary, uh, sorry, Herman's uh, wife, um, you know, who kind of just puts up with his BS as well, too. Speaking of that, though, um, they always touch on, oh, well, you know, he's an alcoholic and this and that and that. Right. There's only like one key moment. This, um, well, I, I guess this is like the body shut moment where you just have to have this big grandiose moment where you, where you really see Gary, you know, commit to his performance. Although, to yeah. be honest, I felt like he could have gone a little bit deeper. Like, he was playing this drug guy, just rambling on. He more or less rambles the, the, the plot to what would be Susan right. Kane, but I felt he could have gone a little harder, though. It's just like Gary just yeah. tried to be a drug guy, but whatever, right? But I got where he was going from. Right. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, so performances were a uh, total fight were, 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 were decent. Sorry, were decent to great for what it were. You say you didn't like Orson Welles. I, I, the thing, huh? like, I, 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 I felt, I like, I felt like, like the guy was legit playing a, a, a parody of Orson. Like, Orson Welles right. talks like this, and you wouldn't yeah, work exactly. a single day in this town. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he was... has to talk like that. <laughs> That's kind of funny because you think, like, SNL oh, well. For me. So I, I was, no, I said that, that was some SNL sketch bullshit for me. I was like so underwhelmed by that that performance. I don't know what the hell he was trying to it, go it, it for. It just felt well, a little, a little happy. Like I understand, yeah. it's awesome. He has a voice. He has a certain look and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But it just came up a little happy, especially how they have him argumentative <laughs> towards and yeah. just you know frustrated and you know why isn't who, why why what kind of what kind of draft is this? What kind of script is this? And you know what I mean yeah. so it's it's evoking a lot of. You know, Citizen Kane vibes stuff. Look, technically, I was digging everything about this, right? Like, I, I watched this on my, my kind of biggish monitor at home, you know what I mean? I was, like, just digging in the... Just appreciating the shots, right? The, the cinematography, which is gorgeous. The visuals, all that. Uh, even the, the, the full rear screen projection stuff. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Visual. I was digging everything all that kind of stuff yeah, there. Yeah, great. Yeah. Um, the attention to sound and to visual detail. All that was great, right? Um, you even have like little Hollywood icons that show up here or there. Right. Probably all of them I even pick up on, but it's one of those shows like I, I, I just need to watch like some YouTube videos saying, Oh, well, in this scene, this guy was there. Like, look how we, we missed on Bill and I, right? You know what I mean? But I just felt like because it had right. to go into this political thing and talk about the, 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 you know, like it, it touches on certain things, but it doesn't really go in depth as, as much as it could have, right? right? Like, I just felt like we could have seen what was going on instead of just hearing, like, oh, well, this is why we shouldn't work with this guy and blah, 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 right, blah, blah. Right. Yeah, it's just kind of hints at things that expects you to be so knowledgeable in, in all this stuff to be like, oh, that's what they're going for. That's what they're saying. That's what right. it means. I know what would go in on here, but for everybody else, you just be like, what? The? But at the, yeah, at the I, end, I, I, it's kind I, of what a story. Sorry, the end of this just wants some a story they they can just kind of connect to like even by myself right. I just wanted a reason to care for who I kind of give a shit about what was going on I just felt like no it's just all these historical things that happened or maybe or, or may have happened and I'm supposed to care because right. if it wasn't for this we wouldn't you know cinema would be where it is today but right. It's At the end, you have yeah. to tell a story that we could connect with emotionally. I just felt it was all about facts and historical details as opposed to, you know, this is why but, I should care about this I, character. But, that's, that's what I felt. But, but this thing, it was, it was BS. So that's what that kind of ruined it for me. I, I don't know what, what you're trying to go for with that. Now. Whatever. Um, somebody yeah. could probably correct me and tell me, no, it's actually correct. And yes, da, da, da. All right, fine. But I, as far as I understand, that central conceit, the big reveal, was completely wrong. When I first watched the film, I did not know that. I thought it was right. I was like, okay. And then when I was like, I yeah, find I, out I after thought, it, not I thought everything was right too. You know what I mean? So. No, but I think it's not. A, it's not like I even an interesting like conceit. No, it's not even that interesting of a conceit. That's my problem. So whatever. Anyway, the more we talk about, it, we gotta spoil what it is. And it's like, all right, I get it. Whatever. And I get it. I get it in terms of like the modern political context because it's like that's the idea that like right. oh well, it, this thing happened. That bullshit, right? Whatever. Yeah. So in yeah. closing, um, no, this is not. This is not the best David Fincher movie out there, right? It is one of his right. most well made. You can tell that he put a lot of heart into it. As you see, this is truly a love letter to you know the you know the golden age of cinema, uh, and you can tell that you know he just kind of did this for his pops, like you know what? This I I just assume it, right? Like this is the stuff that his yeah. dad introduced him to, and yeah, this is what kind of got him 
to ball let's just stay in, in, in cinema even though he went three drama with alien tree right he went three drama but still you know what i mean he 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 still has a really really impressive uh you know uh filmography right and uh, yeah this this one yeah, yeah is is testament to that but i just felt this wish to that emotion wise character wise i could just kind of relate to things i could kind of understand what's going on you know what i mean like you could throw in all the you know all the all the deep historical and political stuff but at the end of the day after care about the character i just felt like oh they're just yeah. guys that we just see in characters that we just see and it's like oh well they did the thing and that's it but it how how does that really impact me right but at the same time, though, and this is where I really find myself conflicted. This is a show that I really don't want to forget as far as what 2020 offered us. Because, yeah, this is probably one of the most impressive movies I've seen all year. And this right. for sure is going to get Oscar dubs. If this does not get an Oscar dub. Oh, no, yeah. yeah, yeah like, this, 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 this is now well, that's another huge thing. disappointment, that's, right? Yeah, no, that's, that's another thing because it, was, it, it seemed tailor-made for Oscar shit because, oh, well, it's Hollywood about Hollywood. Okay. Is that yeah. shit, right? What? Yeah, uh, it, exactly. But but it's not like, you know, uh, it doesn't feel tropey like how, you know, Trial of the Chicago 7, which was a good show, but still felt like they, right. they, they kind of designed it in such a way to, to earn Oscar noms, right? But here, yeah, exactly. it felt like they just put a lot of effort, like really blood, sweat, and tears to just recreate this world, right, for us. And I mean, whether it gets nominated or not, Dread, yeah, we could all look back at the show and be like, wow, look at look at this, right? But yeah, yeah. real talk, if this will get an Oscar dub, seriously, something wrong, right? If if I if if just for cinematography alone, Dread, but there's something, right? But I don't see this winning Best Picture at all. If that wins Best Picture, huge, huge, huge upset, right? But yeah, this yeah. is a show that I don't want to forget for 20, 2020. So Right now, I kind of wrestling as to whether this should be in my best of or just an honorable mention. But at the moment, I feel in a very, very, very light four out. Sorry, very light four out of five for this one, man. This is still yeah, worth checking um, out, despite the narrative issues that I I called out and just character development all that kind of stuff. But yeah. This is what I really do want to watch over again. And yeah, I really had to do more research into it afterwards now. Thank you, film. So yeah, now I have to read yeah. up about the real Hoover, the real William, and real everybody. I can't just watch a show and just learn everything about shit, right? But yeah, this is this is truly a very ambitious and audacious film from David Fincher. I'm glad that he's back. I don't know where we're going to get anything else from him. But yeah, man, I mean, dude, the sky is still the limit for this man. Right. So, as, yeah. As, 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 yeah, as I said before, if this film came out 10, 15 years ago, I would have really loved it. I would have been, this would have been a classic, true classic. But that, because of how, I don't want to, for lack of a better term, how cynical I've become about the world and how looking at stuff like these kind of history things not that interesting or anywhere near as interesting as people make it out to be and on top of that it's it 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 kind of has a well I, as far as i understand a, a somewhat largely false narrative involved with the central conceit of the story i couldn't really get into this as much as as i could have right the non-linear storytelling we get why they did it is because it's another nudge another nod to citizen kane itself you know so we could you know make that debate i dug it for what it was but ultimately just only because of the technical aspects it, it's it's very impressive so as it is right now seven out of ten right i'll probably appreciate it a little more if i'm in the mood but this kind of film buffy catering to super film buff stuff just not not that impressive to me anymore um whatever so that's me yeah i understand, understand. Yeah. and yeah um as, as a whole well i i really don't know if people are gonna gravitate to this too like i think the, the cell will be david fincher's name alone by but yeah. i have a feeling that casual viewers will watch this get bored halfway and just watch i don't know you know some other show yes by which is unfortunate right uh, i really felt like it just could have kept audiences sorry kept viewers roped into this give us a character where we could at least give a shit about instead of just yeah. random scenes that's supposed to be strung together oh so this is okay right but yeah, I mean, we we will be hearing about this for sure when you know Oscar season rolls around. Um, right. And if 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 you're still curious, I mean, if you if you like films like this, you know, give it a look. If you're a David Fincher fan, give it a look. If you love Citizen Kane, yeah, watch it. But for everybody else, I would say go in cautiously, right? Don't don't go in go go in knowing that it's gonna be about you know the the, the oldies, right? The good oldies or what that, and you will have to do yeah. some research either prior or afterwards right if that's too much then 
just wait till Oscar season then when you hear about how big a scene it is then you can give it a look and be like oh okay whatever right. 